Hi, welcome to Ingvid. I'm Adam. In today's uh, video, I'm going to talk to you about some expressions and idioms from the world of politics. Now, the reason I want to go over these is not so much because you will hear these or expressions used every day conversation, but for those of you who are interested in politics and want to discuss politics or want to read about politics, you will see a lot of these expressions in newspaper articles and you might not really understand what they're talking about, okay? These are meant for people like native speakers who are used to these expressions and they know what's going on. So it's important for you to understand them so you can read high quality articles that use these often. So for example, we're going to look at pass the buck and the buck stops here and very similar meaning idiom, kick the can down the road. So I put this together because they mean almost the same thing. A political hot potato, to be full of hot air, to get on or to get off your soap box, and to press the flesh. Okay, so let's start with this. When we pass the buck, we pass, 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 pass. Basically, we're not taking ownership of uh, something. It could be a topic, it could be a decision, it could be a reaction. We don't want to do it, we pass it on to somebody else to do. It's very similar to kick the can down the road. So here's the can. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to pick it up. So I just kick it down the road. Maybe somebody else will get to it or I'll get to it later when I reach that spot down the road. So basically, I don't want to take responsibility for something today. Now, I think it was FDR, uh, Roosevelt, a president who said, I'm not going to pass the buck around. The buck stops here. So he was a leader. He was going to make decisions. He was going to take responsibility for his position. And now every time somebody says the buck stops here, it means that they're going to take responsibility. They're going to show their leadership. Again, a lot of politicians would rather pass the buck than take the buck, hold the buck, take responsibility, be accountable. Okay. A political hot potato. So this again, a little bit related. If you have a very controvers controversial, controversial, uh, topic or issue. So if something is controversial means there's a lot of argument about it, there's a lot of debate, there's very little agreement, okay? Or it's a very sensitive topic. So for example, in the States, the issue of guns and gun control is a con controversial topic. It's a hot potato, a political hot potato. Because if you decide that you're for gun control, you will anger a lot of uh, the voters. If you say you're against gun control, you will anger a lot of different voters. So it's a hot potato. Now imagine, uh, I'm sure all of you have at some point cooked a potato or have eaten a cooked potato, especially one in a fire. You put it in a fire, you let it cook. When you pull it out, it's very hot. If you hold on to it, you will burn your hand. So you, you juggle it. Like, that's like, nobody wants to actually hold on because if you hold it, you will get burned. Okay. Get burned. Now in politics, getting burned means making a mistake and basically getting elected out of office. Okay. So a political hot potato is something you have to be very careful with. You don't want to make a quick decision. You don't even want to make a decision if possible. Now, I don't want to be too general, but from my perspective, most politicians are a little bit cowardly. Okay. They're always afraid. Everybody wants to keep their position. Everybody wants to keep their jobs. They're always looking at the next election and they don't want to anger their constituents, their voters. So they don't want to make any big decisions that might get them burnt, might get them hurt in the next election. So a political hot potato, something very controversial and nobody wants to take hold of. Now to be full of hot air. If we're talking about, again, politicians, politicians like to talk and talk and talk. So a politician who talks a lot, but doesn't actually say very much, we say about him or her that they're full of hot air. Okay. They're full of hot air and it all comes out because hot air comes out. It doesn't stay inside. So they talk, 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 talk and say nothing. It all goes up in the air and disappears. Okay. It doesn't stick to get on or off one soapbox. So in the old days, if you had a political opinion and you wanted to share it with other people, there wasn't an internet. There wasn't even a TV or radio. I'm talking about a long time ago. So people would take the 
wooden box that actually carried soap before to deliveries. They would take it to the town square. They would put it down. They would stand on it so they're a little bit higher than all the people. And then they start talking and expressing their opinions. So that, that's where the expression comes from, to get on your soapbox, to express very strong opinion, opinions and share them with somebody, with people. So if you get on your soapbox, means you start talking a lot and expressing opinions. These days, it basically means you're complaining about something, usually something political, but still. So if somebody tells you to get off your soapbox, it means stop complaining. Nobody wants to hear it anymore. Nobody cares about your opinions. Just you're full of hot air. Stop talking. Okay. And then press the flesh. So again, what do politicians do? The election is coming up. So now they can't hide in their office and pretend nothing's going on. And they can't avoid the hot potato. They can't pass the buck. They need to go out and press the flesh. Press the flesh. Well, I can't do it here, but press. This is flesh, skin, right? Meat. Press the flesh, shake hands. So they go around, they shake everybody's hands, they kiss all the babies, they take photo ops, they get elected, they go back to their offices and hide there. Okay, so these are five. We're gonna look at five more that you might see in your political adventures. Okay, so now we have a few more. We have toe the line, politically correct or politically incorrect. Uh, the red tape or cut through the red tape drag someone's name through the mud and carrot and stick approach. Okay, so let's start with toe the line. So toe is like toe on your foot, right? You have 10 toes, 10 fingers. Toe the line, basically you have a line, all everybody's toes should be on the line. Basically means everybody has to be going in the same direction. Everybody in a team or a group needs to be working towards the same target. Okay, everybody needs to conform. Conform means don't try to be different. Don't argue with the team. Do what everybody else is doing. Toe the line. Okay. This is not only in politics. We have this in business, especially. This is what the team is doing. Whether you disagree or not, if, even if you disagree, I should say, you still have to toe the line. You still have to do what you're told, do what the rest of the team is doing. Even if you think it's wrong, because if you don't toe the line, you probably will get fired. Okay. Now, I'm sure you've heard this expression many times, politically correct, politically incorrect, political correctness, if you want to do it without the Y, and then just add the ness, political correctness. Now, basically what this means is speaking or expressing opinions in a way that doesn't offend anyone. So if you're politically correct, it means you're not offending anyone. You're not saying anything that somebody will find hurtful or insulting or whatever. If you're politically incorrect, you just don't care. You say your, you express your opinions, whatever they are. If somebody gets offended, too bad. Now, a lot of people think that these days we have, or at least Western liberal democracies, as they're called, have become too politically correct. Nobody expresses an opinion. Nobody is allowed to say anything because somebody will be offended. Okay, it's become a problem in many cases, but at the same time, you don't want to be insulting anybody. You, like, if you are, if you allow political incorrectness, you're basically allowing racists and misogynists, like people who hate women, men who hate women, to say so, to say negative things that will hurt people and create a bad in, uh, environment. So people try to be politically correct, but again, there is such a thing as too much political correctness. Red tape is basically bureaucracy. <clears throat> bureaucracy, oops. It's basically all the paperwork that you have to do. So governments these days have become so bureaucratic that nothing gets done. You, you need to, for example, you want permission to build a, a new building in this street. So you have to go to this department of the government and get a form and fill it out. Once it's filled out, you have to take it to that department and get a stamp. Once you have that stamp, you take it to that department and they give you a, a license to do something. Then you have to take that license, go hire the people you need. Then you have to go to the government, make sure that they approve of those people. <clears throat> then once you get that approval, you go to another department and get this stamp, that stamp, that stamp, that stamp. So if you cut through the red tape, means you go straight from point A to point B without too much bureaucracy. 
So a lot of governments have become so bureaucratic, again, that nothing gets done. So a lot of new leaders, <clears throat> a new elected leaders, are trying to cut through all the red tape and get the government working again, okay? Government has become too big, nothing gets done, it's time to cut through the red tape. Now, to drag someone's name through the mud, it's basically like it sounds. You know mud, like if, if it rains on the ground and the ground is like dirt, it becomes mud, right? Like very brown liquid. If you drag someone's name through the mud, you are basically hurting their reputation. Maybe you're embarrassing them, maybe you're humiliating them, you're causing other people to lose respect for them. You are hurting their reputation and basically their careers could be over. Again, not only in politics, this happens a lot in the entertainment industry, in the music industry, people say bad things about each other and they drag each other's names through the mud. But generally speaking, if you try to drag someone's name through the mud, it's very difficult for you not to get any mud on your shoes, as they say. Which means you're going to be hurt by this as well. Because you did this to somebody, it doesn't look good on you either. So keep that in mind. Lastly, carrot and stick approach. So when it comes to diplomacy, for example, one country is trying to get another country to do something. There are two ways to do this. You can offer them a carrot or you can offer them the stick. So basically this comes from a mule, like a donkey. An animal looks like a horse, but not. They're very stubborn animals. If you want the, uh, the mule to move and it doesn't want to move, you have two options. You can put a carrot on a stick and put it on a string again in front of the donkey and the donkey wants to eat it. So it will start moving towards the carrot, but the carrot keeps moving. But there's an incentive, okay? So you can offer an incentive or you can offer a reward for doing something or you can use the stick. So if the donkey doesn't move and the carrot doesn't work, then you take that stick and you hit the donkey on the bum and the donkey starts to move because it's in pain. So there's punishment or at least the threat of punishment. So carrot and stick, you can offer them incentives to do something you want or you can offer them punishments, threaten them with punishments if they don't do something you want. And both approaches have their time and place. Sometimes the carrot will work, sometimes the stick will work, sometimes you'll need to use both, okay? So that's the carrot and stick. So again, you're not gonna hear these expressions in everyday conversation necessarily, but if you are interested in politics and you do want to read Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, Fox, whatever your political leanings are, you're going to need to know these expressions because you're going to see them and you're going to hear them in political discussions quite often. Okay, so it's good to know them. If you want to test your knowledge of them, go to ingvid.com. There's a quiz there that you can take and test your understanding. If you have any questions about this lesson, please ask in the comment section of Ingvid. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and come back for more helpful lessons to help you improve your everyday English. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.